Winston, uh, thank you for joining us and a very good morning uh, to you. Good morning. All right, I can hear you loud and clear. That's great. A couple of things. Uh, look, I first, just in a general term, a few political polls out, and it looks like, though perhaps, you know, not uh, consistently above 5%, New Zealand First is back in the frame. There is life in the party yet, quite clearly. Uh, you're not sounding surprised, are you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, Winston, New Zealand first, uh, back in the polls, there or thereabouts, and some big issues that I imagine you will have positions on are now current in New Zealand. I want to start first with the issue of a referendum or at what ACT calls its bottom line policy of a referendum on the Treaty of Waitangi, and that's all we've got at the moment. We don't have details about what that referendum would be. Chris Luxon says he's against an idea of some debate or vote from New Zealanders about as to what role the treaty should have in our lives going forward. Um, are you philosophically or in general terms up for a referendum on the Treaty of Waitangi or not? No, I'm not. And I'll tell you why. What's going on in this country is deceptive, it's underhand, it's breathtakingly arrogant, and without any mandate from the people of this country by way of the legal consensus. So why do we have a referendum on something that has no legal authority whatsoever? There's a referendum coming. It's called the election in 2023. All right. Um the issue of three waters, which we have reported on this week, a select committee report back, which has drastically expanded the scope, uh, not just of co-governance, which in some instances now becomes essentially Maori sovereignty over aspects of water policy, but also has expanded the water, geothermal water now included, coastal water now included, and um, the, the mana o te wai, um, concept of Māori being able to set strategic direction for water without any reference to local councils or to Pākehā has been enshrined in the report back, which we are told will be passed under urgency before Christmas. Um, I might note that mainstream media have almost entirely ignored these rather dramatic developments. Um, are you aware of them and what is your view of them? I most certainly am aware of them, and when you say the mainstream media has ignored this, uh, this is, again, just uh, most disquieting. Here we've got the mainstream media, you've got serious issues, not three waters, five waters, in fact, it's six waters now. The sixth one is they're pissing down your back and telling you it's raining. That's what's going on in this human politics at the moment, and the mainstream media is not even covering it. This, is how to, this has to be on purpose. It cannot be innocence, it cannot be ignorance. So out comes something last moment, not even in the select committee uh, recommendations, and the minister, as a subterfuge on a Friday afternoon, drops this in right in New Zealand's face, and the mainstream media don't even pick it up. What on earth is going on apart from serious corruption of the fourth estate in this country? Um, we do have the National Party uh, and ACT saying they would repeal if they became government they would repeal the Three Waters uh, legislation uh, as a matter of priority. Would that also be the intent of New Zealand First, were it to be in government or to be negotiating to be in government? Mr. That that would... Mr. Plunkett, Mr. Plunkett, don't ask me these sorts of questions. It was the National Party and Chris Finlayson, alongside John Key, who signed up the UN Declaration on Indigenous Rights. It was the National Party that changed the coastal, the foreshore and seabed. It was the National Party that got a, a special group on the Auckland Super City that was started by Rodney Hart and the Act Party. Please don't put up these people as the paragons of virtues on this No, issue. I'm not. I, I'm person, asking you what you person, would do. Person, excuse me. One person's been consistent for his whole career on this issue, and you're talking to him. All right. So you would repeal. That would be part of any deal you would do that you would want that legislation repealed. I've said so. That's why Good. I'm packing the halls around this country. Okay. Um, given that it's Labor's legislation... You're unlikely to do a deal with them then, aren't you? Well, for again, for the umpteenth time of coming on your program, I said to you, no one gets to lie to me twice. Yep, yep. Uh, I, I hear you. I hear you absolutely. 
Look, another policy flo another policy floated this week, Winston, is the um, the boot camps. And I don't know, you've been in politics longer than I have. The idea of the boot camp for the youth offender, get tough uh, on them, etc., as it seems to come round on a regular basis. And it never seems to stick and it never seems to get implemented. I can only presume using common sense and logic, is that because it's not a very good policy, but it's quite a good vote grabber or attention grabber for a party like the National Party. What are your views on the kind of put ankle bracelets on the 10-year-olds and send them all off to, to boot camp and give them a haircut uh, sort of response to the serious um, crime and lawlessness problems we have in the country at the moment? Well, Billy Nish announced this policy in 2017. Uh, this is just a rehash. It's a very same policy. But whilst we're at it, I've been listening to all these people who are criticising it. These sort of sociologists, for example, who can't explain to me that a family of eight, we've got seven law-abiding children and one who's not. And the, the, the kind of excuses they're making at the moment with respect to these kids who are ram-riding businesses and destroying a, a small business and jewellery shops and what have you, the kind of lousy excuses at the moment that I'm hearing in attacking what the National Party is doing is against, is sickening to hear because they have no answer. Of course those people have to be picked up. But what National's missing and what they don't seem to understand is we have got to, when these offenders are caught, put their parents in front of the court as well. Ask them what's going on. We're paying social welfare benefits. We're paying family support for those kids to be looked after. We want accountability. And I'm not interested in what the Labour Party or some of this bunch of uh, sickly white liberals or, or, or sociologists are thinking. I want the problem fixed because it's destroying the fun fundamental environment which business can operate. And that's called security. Yeah. Before we go anywhere else. Business can't survive without security. All right. So in some ways, and Luxon has copped a fair bit of criticism this week for saying... It's parents' responsibility to get their kids to school. That actually is what being a parent is all about. You would concur with that, that we do need to look uh, not to the state or not to broader society, but to those who are specifically charged with raising their kids, and we need to ask them to do their job, their fundamental basic job as parents. Well, Sean, look, I look at Parliament these days and I wonder what these people think or how, whoever gave them the processing psychologically for the job. But compulsory attendance at school came in in 1877. That's a long time ago when people who never been to university were in Parliament saying, we need to have our children attend school and get educated. And we've got 65% in some schools of uh, levels of truancy. This is a massive waste of the taxpayers' money a massive waste of human capital, and we're going to pay a fortune for those untrained people if we don't act now. So I want there to be 100% attendance at school and no truancy and start addressing one of the biggest uh, losses of advantage that this country has got, and that is start fixing up our human capital. Our numeracy and literacy, and, and, and literacy levels are disastrous. They've fallen to something like 42%. This is disgraceful. Mm. Uh, Winston, I just want to come back finally to the, now you call it six waters, I'm finding it hard, hard to keep up. Uh, the, the government, the government, the government seems determined on this issue and it would seem on this issue to keep going despite any criticism, despite what I think is a growing disquiet amongst New Zealanders in general, about this policy direction, about co-governance. And some of the observers have said the Prime Minister seems enthralled or under the power of the Maori caucus, and in particular Nanaia Mahuta, who is not taking a single step backwards on these issues, even as many questions swirl around uh, her behaviour in regards to the appointment of people to certain positions, uh, we see Tuki Morgan popping up, getting a, a government job associated with water administration. What do you think, why do you think Labor is incapable of slowing down the walker or stopping and having a cup of tea on this stuff? 
Because from the Prime Minister down, they arrogantly are saying, we know better than you, we are the podium of truth. Everything we say is honest, everything else that somebody else says is dubious and doubtful. And it's the, it's, a, it's the Pandora principle. They are saying to themselves, and it's been in the Labour Party a long time, we let this out of the box and we legislate it and you won't be able to change it. And New Zealanders need to wake up and New Zealanders need to understand the level of the ma malignancy there is in the thinking behind this present government, the Labour Party right now. And they haven't even disclosed to the people of this country what their intentions are. They're just doing it. And it's defined in the extreme. But I have to say at the same time, I'm talking to a media platform here, but the mainstream media are condoning it and encouraging it. And that's the most disquieting thing that I've never conceded in my long career in politics. Winston, I thank you for your time. Could I just say we're going to get hold of you over the weekend. We're going to sort out this technical things because I know we can make the audio work a bit better. You're looking well, though. I thank you for your time this morning, and we will speak Thanks. again soon. Thank uh, you very much. Cheers. That All is right. uh, Winston Peters, leader of the, of the New Zealand First Party. And as I said, the political polls suggest to me that New Zealand First is back in the game, but it's not there yet. It's not at 5% yet. And he was pretty clear... <sighs> Once again, if you are wondering, and I think we've got to keep all these interviews and put them together, the very clear signal is that a vote for Winston Peters is not a vote for a negotiation with the Labor Party and returning them to power. Uh, he is now being what I would call for Winston consistent on that. Um, that you're not going to get a Labor government if you vote for Winston, but you might get a national government with some New Zealand First views tacked on or some ACT views uh, tacked on. Um, he has bagged the boot camp proposal from Chris Lux and a pretty good piece by Luke Malpass and stuff this morning about this policy. Yes, Bill Ingus, uh, introduced it in 2017. Boot camp military tra training for delinquent youth is a pretty hoary old political chestnut. It is a well-worn wolf whistle to the stupid conservatives. Um, it doesn't address the core issues of youth crime. Um, and it can be easily criticised for breeding fitter young criminals who can also shoot guns. Um, and, and Ram Raiders, why not give them a tank? You know? <laughs> um, but, and I'll be honest, I look at, um, I look at Chris Luxon. It's unimaginative, Mr Luxon. It is traditional... It is boilerplate political campaigning. So I say the whole, I, I just think it's a stupid policy. I've seen it rolled out three, four, maybe five times in my um, journalistic career. It never sticks, it never works. Um, it's for ultra stupid conservatives, that policy. And I just don't know why uh, Mr Luxon and the National Party can't be slightly more innovative. Um, or are they just wanting some soft middle ground conservative votes with their boot camp policy.